Compared to the pretty benign weather over the last couple of months, this is an action-packed edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday evening. It is the 16th day of October in 2025, and it's Thursday, so well, we got an update from the U.S. Drought Monitor now as we head deeper into the fall season and, and harvest season starts to wind down. The uh, drought situation becomes a little less notable or important, if you will, but this is something we've been talking about for weeks on end. And actually, the uh, drought designations did improve over last week uh, in a lot of eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania as well. The, the yellow here, that's abnormally dry. That's uh, a better category than kind of that tan color. Um, that we had in more of the area last week. That's a moderate drought designation, that tan color. The abnormally dry, though, uh, conditions still noted in all of Mahoning County, all of Trumbull County, and a good chunk of both Lawrence and Mercer Counties. Now, in Columbiana County, where the drought designation reached the extreme uh, category a few weeks ago, um, we still have a severe drought down towards East Liverpool in the southeastern parts of Columbiana County. But yeah, it is uh, it is slowly starting to improve our drought situation, that is, and the rain that we have coming this weekend, especially Sunday, of course, uh, will help uh, the drought as well. And how, how dry has it been over the last couple of months? One way to look at it, over the last two months, since August the 15th, Phoenix, Arizona has had 5.86 inches of rain. Youngstown, Ohio has had 4.73 inches of rain. That's over an inch less than Phoenix. Now, to be fair, Phoenix has had a, kind of a rainy period um, late in the summer and early in the uh, fall season, but still, it's pretty remarkable for our part of the country um, to have that much less rain than Phoenix over a two-month period. All right, so we, we also get an update on Thursdays as well as Mondays from our friends at explorefall.com and the foliage across the area you know it's it's noticeable for sure we're in the kind of medium to high categories um reaching peak color out to the east a few hours altoona pa johnstown state college williamsport and then up towards elmira new york binghamton and we're past peak now in the adirondacks the green white mountains uh, up into new england you know it's it's a muted season for the colors the colors are not awful but they're certainly not as bright and as vibrant as some years we can blame the dry and warm weather that we've had so often of late for that, a lot of tree stress. And, you know, according to Explore Fall, we should be pretty much close to peak in most of the region in about a week or so. This is the official forecast for a week from today. I would expect the true peak probably to be somewhere between the 23rd and 29th of October. But, you know, keep your expectations in check because this is not one of our better years for foliage. And, well, speaking of foliage, um, it's that time of the month where we do a weather podcast on the 21 News Feed. If you're a podcast listener, wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you happen to listen to them, um, check out and subscribe to the 21 News Feed for different podcasts each week. And once a month, it's a weather-themed uh, episode of the uh, of the podcast, and we call it the Radar. And Andrew DePaulo hosted this month and talked about fall foliage, the science um, behind why the leaves change colors, and uh, some of the best places, of course, across the valley to check out the fall colors, including Mill Creek Park. So check that out if you're a podcast listener. All right, uh, the cold nights uh, certainly can help to accelerate the foliage season. We had a cold night last night, and as promised, I think tonight will be even a little bit colder in some spots. The uh, Weather Service office in Pittsburgh uh, upgraded from a freeze watch to a freeze warning in Crawford County, Butler County, uh, PA, down into uh, uh, parts of the Laurel Highlands as well, east of Pittsburgh. But it was a, a frost advisory they went with in Mercer and Lawrence, and the Cleveland Weather Service Office also did a frost advisory for all of their northeast Ohio counties. We're splitting hairs a little bit here. Um, I, I, I do think that even in, in areas that are under the frost advisory, could you see a sub-freezing temperature tomorrow morning? I think that will be a uh, possibility. Whichever, you know, freeze warning, frost advisory, whichever it is for your location, take care of those plants that you hope to, uh, you know, they you hope they survive a little bit longer into the uh, fall season, those mums and things like that. Bring them in or cover them up before bed tonight. And yeah, temperatures tomorrow will be in the 30s pretty much uniformly. And I think in the colder spots across parts of the region, we're going to see a 32 or three, 33 degree reading at daybreak for our Friday morning. We're going to shake off the cold, though, and have a seasonable afternoon, although it'll be a little bit cloudier Friday afternoon than it was today. A veil of high and mid-level clouds filtering overhead may look a little threatening, that sky at times, during the second half of Friday. But aside from maybe a little Virga on the radar, we should be dry, and we should be dry yet again for high school football. We, we've pretty much had no rain this football season in most of the area on Friday evenings, and this week, no exception. Now, it will be warmer than last week, generally speaking. That, that cloud deck filtering in will help prevent the temperatures from falling quickly 
in the evening. Uh, we're not going to see as fast as a temp of a temperature plunge as we saw last evening or this evening. So our Friday evening temperatures will probably be in the 50s during the course of all of our games. High pressure will finally fade away and lead to that partly sunny sky as we get into the afternoon. This advancing warm front might produce an overnight shower. It's a small chance. But I think as we get into Saturday, midday and afternoon, boy, it's going to be nice outside. We're going to get into this warm sector. We're going to have a brisk southerly breeze. We're going to get into the 70s. Plan your outdoor activities for this weekend on Saturday if you can, because Sunday will be pretty much the direct opposite as we have... What I, you know, what I kind of think of as, as the seasons, as autumn's first pretty stout storm system cruising through the Great Lakes. This is going to have a wind component. We're, of course, going to get wet on occasion. And temperatures might actually fall in the afternoon. Depending on the exact timing of the passage of our cold front, we might see one of those days where temperatures reach their peak late morning before falling in the afternoon. So we'll do 74 on Saturday, but that 68 could be a lunchtime high on Sunday. We might spend the... Uh, you know, late afternoon hours closer to 60 on Sunday. Showers will come and go throughout the day. It's hard at this point to pinpoint when it's more likely to rain than other times, but just plan on a pretty unsettled day with, with showers a possibility at any point. Could be a thunderstorm. Um, we can't rule that out. Uh, I, I think the atmosphere will not be very unstable on Sunday, but there's going to be a lot of wind energy aloft, a lot of wind shear, and so it'll be possible um, to get some thunder and lightning, perhaps, in some what we call low-topped convection. In other words, clouds that don't billow way up in the sky like summertime thunderstorms, but they're not as high in the sky, but they can still produce lightning and thunder and maybe some strong winds as well if we get some of those thunderstorms going. But even independent of thunderstorms, even if we don't see any lightning and thunder, it's still going to be a, just a windy day, a generally windy day. What we call the synoptic winds will still be notable, 40 to 45 miles per hour, pretty common throughout Sunday. And even though it'll be unsettled and, and windy through the daylight hours, I think Sunday night's no picnic either. It's still going to be rainy at times, still pretty windy as well, I think uh, at least through the first half of the night. The rain probably tapers off after midnight Sunday night. So uh, finally, kind of a, a true autumn storm system moving through the Great Lakes, the first of what I'm sure will be many as we head into the autumn and the winter season. And speaking of the winter season, um, if you've been watching my videos of late, I've been talking about uh, uh, how we've pinpointed November 11th as the date of our annual winter forecast, short version and long version. If you're watching this video, chances are you might prefer the longer version. And by the way, today, the uh, uh, Climate Prediction Center, they do the long range forecasts for NOAA. They put out their initial November outlooks and their winter updated winter outlook as well. We're going to briefly touch on those outlooks and their their uh, outlook for us for November is basically equal odds of a warmer than average month, a cooler than average month, or a very near average month. That's why we see all these neutral colors around our region. I think that's probably about the right idea. I don't uh, I don't have a strong feeling yet on if November is likely to be warmer or colder than average. There's kind of mixed signals. So I think their thinking here is pretty sound. Um, I like what they also have for the precipitation forecast. I think there is a little bit of a stronger signal that November will continue the not very wet trend, if you will, or dry trend that we've had over the last couple of months. So perhaps a drier than average month will uh, be the outcome across our region. And here's their uh, updated winter forecast, December, January, and February. They, they put out these long range forecasts in the middle of every month. So they've had a December through February forecast going for several months now. They just update it around the middle of the month. And I'll tell you, I I can't argue with what they have. My official forecast is still a few weeks away, but the overall vibe of their map temperature-wise, I think is generally pretty sound. Colder than average weather favored for the winter season in the northern tier of states. It's likely to be a warmer than average season in the southern tier of states. We might find ourselves somewhere in between. Um, I, I can't argue with that idea right now. That doesn't necessarily mean, of course, that that's going to be my forecast. We're still a few weeks away, but I can't, uh, I can't uh, nitpick their forecast both for November or for the upcoming winter season too much at this point. So we'll talk more and more, of course, about the upcoming winter and future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. Have a great rest of your Thursday night. No Weather Geeks on Friday, but uh, I'll be updating the weekend forecast and keeping you abreast of uh, what to expect on Sunday with that storm system pivoting through the region. So check it out on all my social media outlets on Friday and over the weekend as well.